everyone. This is Laura coming to you from the house. It is Saturday afternoon and we are beat and cold. <laughs> so um, in this video, you're gonna see the extremes of Southwest Georgia weather. I'm wearing shorts in some of the earlier footage and today I'm bundled up with my, my ears covered. So this, this, is, this is the fruits of hard work, We're pretty exhausted. I think we got a lot done though in the last two weeks. I've gotten the majority of the chippy paint scraped off the outside, which we're gonna take a look at that process. I've also got some of the special formulas from 1834 Restoration House. Um, I'm gonna link to their channel in the description below. So be sure to check them out for a lot more detailed explanation of how you go about these paint formulas. That's not really my thing. I just wanted to experiment with it and see if it was gonna be a viable option, viable historic option for repainting the house. So we're in the beginning stages of that. I do have um, one of the walls primed though, and we're gonna be able to look at it and see what we think. But I hope everyone enjoys. This is gonna be a, a pretty cool video, I think. Lots of information. And everyone have a happy and safe long weekend. Um, since it is Martin Luther King Day on Monday, I, I did wanna share a quote of his that I found interesting and kind of relates to the house. It says you don't have to take, see, I mean, you don't have to see the whole staircase to take the first step. And that's what we're doing. We, we, we started and we, we definitely couldn't see the whole staircase, but now we're, we're kind of at a landing, you know, we're, we're, we're about to see at least some little glimmer of light at the end of the tunnel. We can start to see what's happening with the house. The roof was mostly completed um, this past week except for a little bit of flashing. I'm gonna show you a cool shot of that from the road. And again, everyone stay safe and we'll see you next time. Thank you for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe. Bye-bye. So this is the wood underneath all the old chalky lead paint. And if I do say so myself, this is some really beautiful wood. Assuming it's pine, maybe oak, I don't know. I haven't done a test on that. I'm not an expert on wood like this anyway. Some beautiful, beautiful details. Old growth wood that you'll never, ever, ever be able to replicate in the next three or 400 years, probably. I'm gonna put on some of the primer the linseed primer and this is a primer that is a formula from 1834 restoration house mike and Jeannie provided me with this formula and we're going to see how it goes it is two quarts turpentine two quarts linseed oil and 100 grams of titanium white pigmented powder makes you a gallon of it. I made up a half gallon just to see if this is going to work with my particular wood. Let's get cleaned up and then let's see how it goes. This is another area over here that I did with a Zinser oil based primer. Now Zinser is not a linseed oil based primer. It's my thoughts is some sort of synthetic oil that forms the oil base there. What you're seeing right now is a couple of boards that we're going to use for comparison. This is the Zinser primer, linseed oil, and turpentine. I'll link the video to uh, Mike's recipe for this from 1834 Restoration House. Now he said this did not work very well for him that there was some drying issues on it or that it didn't take the linseed top coat very well. We're gonna see if that ends up being the same case here at the Askew house. I've already put a top coat of the Zinser primer here. This had a couple of weeks to dry. I have not topped this with a linseed top coat yet. When I do that, we'll see if my research yields the same thing. 
So what we're gonna do now, we're gonna test the linseed, turpentine, and titanium white primer. You wanna come up and kind of see what this looks like. Kinda of looks like a yellowy, really soupy mixture here. Now, what this is, this is not like the actual paint coat. This is like a hydrator or a wood preservative. And we're gonna see how that compares to the Zinser primer and um, linseed and turpentine. So let's just take a quick first little look here and see what we think. Ah. This is some thirsty wood. Look at that. It's very, very thirsty. You have to put this on in a real, real thin coat. Otherwise, you're gonna get drips, kind of got like I got just then. This doesn't have as much color on it as that first thing I tried did. This is something called a soaker. And it's not like a paint. Sort of like when we put the hydrator on the wood before we put the shellac on it. This is kind of the same, same principle. It's real thin. It's not going to look like something modern. But you can actually see this wood if you come up here and look at it. It's just devouring it. I think it's very, very satisfying to watch this soak. Isn't it pretty? It's kind of got, when this stuff dries, or at least the other side over there, it kind of has a, almost a ceramic like feel. Almost a ceramic feel. What we're gonna do, we're gonna come back here next week and see what this does. Now this may not look as pretty to start with as that over there, but it's not the looks of it. It's gonna be how it takes the linseed based paint. Because nobody's ever gonna see this again after we put the paint on it. It's just like a really nice sealer. Like if you could see this, it's got like a nice sheen to it. Just gonna put a little bit more. Again, you have to kind of level this off if you want to do this because what will happen the it'll sort of pull down on itself so you don't want any, any drip any excess and this stuff is going to take about probably with the weather we've got coming a week or two to actually get good and dry where I could to paint it but anyway that's what we're going to do we're going to compare that to the other side and we'll be able to give you a review <laughs> one thing i wanted to point out about this is you want to make sure when you're doing this and even if you're just doing a modern paint job that you get under your clapboard lip there you can see what I'm talking about here. You can look right under there, that little edge. That's for a lot of rot and a lot of moisture to get in. Haven't gotten the paint off as well in some areas as I want, but as long as it's not alligatored up or flaking off, it should be fine. Turpentine was a big industry 
in southwest Georgia at the time that this house was built. So I think it's ironic enough that the man we refer to as Big Daddy or Charles Peyton Gleaton actually made his fortune in turpentine in the lumber business. And it's ironic right now that we're saving the old clappards that he had put on this house with turpentine, a material that provided the funds to build this house so many years ago. So I found that kind of ironic. And again, I think this has an opalescent look to it. I don't know if you can see it on camera, but when you get right up at it, you can see um, sort of a shiny quality to it. And plus, I love how this stuff smells. It smells like Christmas, even though I just said it was bad luck to have Christmas stuff up at New Year's. I like the smells of Christmas anytime. And turpentine just smells like a lovely, a lovely pine candle. I think they, all, they also could make a really good like men's cologne out of turpentine in my opinion. But if you come up and look at the wood, like just look what this is doing. Look at that thirsty, 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 thirsty wood. Especially underneath here that I assure you has not had a clean out, you know, since the, the first paint job was put on the house. Again, I just think it looks, has a ceramic like quality to it. Now this is not as dark or as pretty initially, I'm noticing as the um, the um, commercial full base primer, but it ain't how it looks. It's what it's gonna look like when the lens seed is put over it. This is not gonna be seen. It's just providing us a, a lovely canvas. And I'm just amazed at how beautiful this wood cleaned up. It is phenomenal looking wood. I just I can't say enough wonderful things about it.
So this is the linseed based primer. After sitting on the house for about a week, I'm pleased with the way it looks. As I said, this is just kind of a little film over everything. Some of it did dry up a little darker than others. As you can see, there's a higher coverage on certain boards, which I just believe has to do with the fact that some of these boards are a little bit more porous, a little bit drier maybe than on other boards. But that's, this is the base. There's a couple of little places I'm gonna clean up a little bit more before I start with my paint. Of course, I haven't started on the window over here. We'll get the facings cleaned up before we start. But this wall over here is getting real close to being ready for the test batch of the color. Stay tuned to see what that is. I can tell you it's not gonna be this stark paper white. I think it's gonna be really cool. And there's our new roof cast against a cold weather Georgia sky. Please ignore that bent light pole. That's not us, that's the city. There it is all shiny and new. I said that's a sight you hadn't seen since 1909 right there. I'm very pleased with it. It looks gorgeous. Here's some closer up shots of the roof. Again, it's kind of blending in with the sky, but like, man oh man, if you remember that rusty Car covered mess that was here before. Now all we have to do is get all these soffits straightened out. We are going to put exterior gutters back on this. The internal gutters are what rotted the house out, so we're not going to put them back. We will have to put them back on the um, flat roof. But that's another day and another lot of dollars but anyway here's some more side shots of it yeah it's kind of hard to get the full impact of this because of the trees there's just some trees kind of in the way here and here it is from the other side 